Ah, home sweet home, and what a lovely house indeed. I finally cleaned up the mess that we had out here, a little temporary setup, and I planted a couple more berry bushes just to keep our food supply going. But uh, let me go inside and actually show you guys how our storage is looking. So up here in the attic is where I moved all of our chests. And, you know, we have them all nice and labeled. Like, we've got our logs, dirt, sand, gravel, some stone, cobblestone, things like that. We've got uh, some of the more important things over here. Our tools, uh, some nether stuff, and then our ores. This is where our good stuff is. And you may have noticed I put the Enderman here in a boat. Um, it's just mainly because when I was working on this area and placing all these chests down and like looking at inside of all these chests and stuff, he kept running back and forth all in front of me and I got scared. I didn't want to accidentally look at him. Oh yeah, I captured him in this boat and uh, I did get a comment saying that we should name tag him. And so we do have a name tag, but unfortunately we've only got three pieces of iron. So we can't really make an anvil yet to rename it. But uh, maybe we'll change that this episode. I really do want to get started on a mine or a quarry or something like that. Just a, a nice place where I can go down and do some easy strip mining, some relaxing strip mining. Get a bunch of good materials and start upgrading our gear. And I'm walking over in this direction because last episode we did a little bit of mining here inside of this cave. And I was thinking we could probably turn this into like some sort of quarry or something. Of course, we've got a lot of terraforming to do. We've got some weird, uh, just floating dirt mounds over this uh, hole here. And also, the roof is starting to oxidize a little bit more. Um, I'm actually planning on making like a gradient. I'm not sure how it's going to look. We may keep it, we may not. But once this gets, the bottom layer gets like fully green or blue or whatever color you want to call it. And then we're going to keep the top very orange. But I'm going to get to work here, do a little bit of terraforming, and try and clean up some of this dirt here just to make this area a little bit more flat. I cannot wait until we get some upgraded tools because I tell you doing all this work with stone with stone shovels is not very fun but uh, as you can see we've got a nice flattened out area here and with all the dirt I actually did a little bit of terraforming too to make this area almost more encompassed by not really a mountain more like hills I guess but if I hop into free cam here you can kind of see what I'm talking about uh, this bit of land sort of stretches over here and almost makes like a crater where we'll have this ravine and yeah as you can see some pillagers came in here this is actually the second uh raid while i've been working on this project you can see in the top right here i've got bad omen uh from killing some guys earlier and now we've got some guys stuck here inside the little uh quarry that we're going to be building I am going to dig this deeper probably towards the level that this hole is so I'm going to have a lot of work to do um, and you know I'm going to be using these stone tools still but I'm going to take a break from digging out holes. Uh, I made a bunch of fences here and I'm not really sure what I want to do with the design like I did make the fences but I was also kind of thinking maybe we could implement some logs as well just to kind of make like a little bit of a safety railing around here. Yeah, I think we're going to strip these uh, spruce logs as well. I just feel like they, the, the color of the stripped log looks a little bit better uh, alongside with the fences. And now we have a fence where you won't be able to accidentally fall into this quarry here. And to give you guys a better idea of how this quarry is going to work, um, obviously, like I said, it's going to be a little bit deeper than this. But I think around this area, we're going to have some kind of crane or something like that that hangs over the edge here, almost like it's lifting up uh, some ore or something like that. And then I think right over there where that log is, 
is probably where we'll have like some zigzag scaffolding as a way to get into the quarry. And I'll just use a little bit of cobblestone kind of like as a marker. And <laughs> okay, I think it's time for these guys to go. Oh gosh. Ouch. Get out of here. And there goes my axe as well. All right. Well, I think the next step to do here is to start digging some of this out. Oh, <laughs> there's still one guy here. He didn't. He didn't come with his crew. He's just just hanging out on his own, I guess. All right, you can stay over there, guy. Um. So I think what I'm gonna do is put like a wall here and block off these caves. I know we've got a cave there and the one over by the other pillager. And then from there, I'll start digging out the rest of this area. So I think it's time for me to put on a little stream or some music and get to grinding on that uh, quarry using these stone tools because I know it is going to take quite a long time. And I'm done. Finally. Just about three hours later and many a stone pickaxes, we finally have this big quarry. I'm kind of trapped in here, so I'll just build a little dirt pillar here just to get out for now. So apart from this dirt pillar, our quarry is looking pretty natural. I like the way it came out. I tried recording a little bit of the process, but like I said, it took like over three hours and I was only using stone pickaxes. So I don't think it would be very entertaining. So a lot of that footage is probably just going to get deleted. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to edit this video yet. Um, I'm kind of thinking I want to do a before and after screenshot. So um, right now you're probably seeing the before and then the after of our land here so far. And here's another angle before and then after all of our hard work. So we've done quite a lot already, um, even though I feel like we've barely made any progress in the episode. Um, you know, this actually took a good bit of time to do. And I've been thinking about the scaffolding. I know, like I said, I wanted to do like a zigzag staircase or something like that that goes down. But I've been also thinking that we want to have our strip mine. And I think I want to do it over in this area. Obviously, a stairway that goes all the way down through. And then, of course, like I said, the crane that's going to hang over this edge right here. So I feel like this side of the quarry is going to be kind of heavily dominated with, obviously, like I said, the strip mine and the crane. But we still got this whole other side of the quarry that's just going to be basically empty. So I'm kind of thinking instead of having the scaffolding just zigzag along this wall, I'm kind of thinking maybe we could use like ladders and have it come down and make like a platform here. And it kind of like wraps around maybe another ladder there and it goes around and down and around and down. It's just so that we get a little bit of use out of this side of the quarry. Let's go grab some blocks and start playing around with that. I've been kind of thinking maybe I'm going to use oak. Uh, I know I used spruce on the fences, um, but we may end up switching it to oak. I'm not really too, too sure yet. This is where the cobblestone was. I'm kind of thinking we have our starting platform right here and it's going to hang over the edge just a little bit. Obviously, we're going to need to make some kind of like support beam just so that it's not like floating. And I'm going to use this trick with the trap doors. You can actually place ladders on trap doors and I think it would look pretty cool as like, you know, that's that's going to be like our ladder to get from each level. So yeah, something simple like this. It looks nice and sleek with the ladders. And it just brings you from this top layer. Look, if you go in free game, you can kind of get a better idea. It'll, it'll go from there, boom, and kind of zigzag, wrap around here. And maybe we'll pop out somewhere down here. Let's just make sure we're lined up with that block. So I'm trying to build a pillar from the scaffolding all the way to the ground. Just to try and, like, make some way, or make some sort of sense that it's, like, you know, it has like some sort of stru structural integrity, I guess, right? And <laughs> I don't know if uh, just a straight log is just the way to go. Looking at it from here, it looks a little silly. I'm thinking we try and do almost like a diagonal and connect it to the wall. Maybe that's how it's like 
connected, I guess. It has some sort of like support beam that way, maybe. Hopefully you guys have a better idea of what I'm aiming for here, but I'm going to get to work on this scaffolding and I might even start working on the crane too. go we're making this place come to life slowly but surely we just installed this crane pulling out some copper and as you saw we've got our scaffolding that brings us all the way down to the bottom of this quarry yeah this place is really starting to come together and one thing i'm really trying to focus on in my builds now is storytelling right so basically just giving uh these sort of objects and builds like a reason to be here so here inside of the quarry, we're going to be getting a lot of uh, ores and a lot of materials and things like that, right? And it's not going to be easy to take it up the ladder all the way back to the surface, right? So we installed the crane to help us lift up these heavy blocks and be able to bring it to the surface. Now that we're down here, this side of the quarry is going to be our sort of like strip mining kind of area. And I'm thinking we're just going to go down right around this area. I think I'm going to put a little bit of like a support beam type of thing going on here. Uh, I don't have like all my spruce and stuff like that. I only have a little bit of wood on me right now. So this is just going to be a very rough sort of outline. Obviously, we're going to try and curve that a little bit more. But yeah, this is where our sort of strip mine is going to go down. Part of me also wants to kind of keep this a little bit more natural. Sort of like how we have with the ravine right or this quarry even though th these are like man-made walls here it still kind of follows a sort of natural uh minecraft terrain generation made a little bit more progress here as you can see we've kind of got the mine entrance sorted out we've got this nice slanted roof and a pretty cool design i used is using these stripped spruce logs along with the regular oak and i don't know it kind of helped make it seem a little bit more like the bottom here or like these these stripped logs are kind of like weathered logs right kind of like this place is a little bit run down it's maybe not the safest place to go into but inside you can see this kind of like the natural sort of cave thing that i was talking about um with the support beams and whatnot i may or may not have just dug into a cave and it looked pretty big <laughs> things might get dicey here oh my gosh the skeleton's already doing so much damage might be cool. We could probably use, utilize this cave uh, in our mine shaft. Might be able to save a little bit of time on the whole natural look if we just actually use Minecraft's real terrain, right? All right. It looks like the immediate danger is good. I mean, there's still some outlying mobs all around, but uh, let's just try and light up this area a little bit just so that we don't have anybody sneaking up on us. And like I said, this place is huge, and I think. That is Skulk over there. Uh, so we might have like a deep dark ancient city right below us or something. We sure do have some Skulk here. Gonna have to be a little bit careful. I don't really see any, uh, what are they called? Catalysts or Shriekers and stuff like that. But you never know. There could be more underneath here. I don't want to trigger anything. Well, the good thing about this big cave is that it's pretty easy to find iron. I know we only had like three ingots left, and I've been saving them for a pickaxe because soon we should be able to find diamonds. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this guy's gonna kill me. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die on the dripstone. Oh my gosh, I'm being shot at. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Hidey hole. I don't even think I'm gonna have enough sweet berries to get me back up to max HP. <laughs> I might need to figure out how to get out of here real quick and make a little pit stop back home. 
Oh, no, no, no. Alright, this is the way out. This is the way out. Five berries to spare. And it's nighttime. Good thing I brought my bed, of course. My sleeping bag. Alright, this should bring us back to full HP, finally. The good thing is we've got more sweet berries in the house, too. But I'm going to go inside. I'm actually going to preemptively make that iron pickaxe. And looks like I left my door open somehow. But anyway, let's just go on ahead and make that iron pickaxe. Um, so just because, you know, we're probably going to get... Uh, okay. Wait, didn't I have three iron ingots in here? I know I didn't use them. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I mean, I, n I never touched those iron ingots. I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't use them. Alright, I mean, I guess that's fine. We did get uh, some iron ingots out of the uh, cave, at least, so we could just smelt some of that. Alright, we got a little bit of armor now, some chest plate, some leggings, and I also made a shield, just, uh, just in case if those skeletons keep shooting us. And of course, this iron pick. So yeah, I think we're ready to go back into the cave and go look for some better ore. And so I did just that. I ventured down into the mine, placing torches along the way to light up the darkness. These caves were full of ore, especially coal and iron. I'm never gonna pass up the opportunity to mine some easy resources. And it wasn't all roses and daisies down here. I did have to fight my way through some hostile mobs. And it's a good thing I did make that shield. Alright, well we didn't find any diamonds in here, unfortunately. But, I think we did light up the area pretty nicely. I know, like, a lot of the walls and stuff like that are pretty dark. But the odds of things spawning and, like, killing us are pretty low now. I say that as a fully gold skeleton with an enchanted bow spawned here. <laughs> So with that being said, I think I'm going to get back to work on building our mine shaft that comes down here. And uh, I'm actually going to bring it into this cave and maybe try and make a floating mine shaft. Um, I know in Minecraft they have the actual abandoned mine shafts. They have chains that, that kind of suspend the mine shaft in air. So we might try and do something similar to that. Um, our little entrance is right there. So we'll probably come out here and go this way. Maybe do a little loop-de-loop -loop and go down towards... The deep dark. So I've been doing some work on the mine shaft, and I know what you're thinking. Like, Ita, this is just playing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's still a work in progress. You just gotta trust me. Trust the process. Right now, it's looking a little silly, but we'll uh, we'll make it look good. But that's not the reason why I'm bringing the camera back on. It's because we found something, or a few things that are actually quite important. So if we head down my little makeshift waterfall, um, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, skulk sensors around here. But I noticed skeletons kept coming out of this little hole up here. And so I went and did a little bit of investigating, and guess what? We got a skeleton spawner. This is pretty awesome. It's a lot better than the zombie spawner. And yeah, I mean, we got some good stuff out of here. Multi-shot, uh, enchanted book, and then fortune one, which is... Nice for early game, Frostwalker one, and a saddle, which actually we don't have a saddle yet, so that's pretty good news. But if you guys see the path that the mineshaft's taking, it's going to come down here and then come down towards where I am right now, and then we're going to loop it and bring it back this way. But the only thing is, if we go over here, probably got to start sneaking around a little bit more in this area, be a little bit more cautious. But down this way, there are some... Uh, what are they called? The Shriekers? I think that's what they're called, the Shriekers. It's the, uh, the ones that spawn in the Warden. And there's actually quite a bit because there's an ancient city right below our mine shaft. And as you can see, it's fully loaded with Shriekers all over the place. Oh my gosh, there's a zombie villager here setting off all this, all these sensors. <laughs> This guy just jump in the lava and die so that I don't have to kill him, please. Okay. Alright, I think
think we're okay over here. Um, the majority of the Shriekers are like towards the city. And oh, this, this is our first diamonds right here, actually. Look at that. Hey. Oh, sweet. There was another one hidden right there. Nice. Oh, yeah. The majority of the Shriekers are located towards the city here. And our mineshaft is going to do a little bit of a turn and then come this way and probably end up somewhere in this area. I think we should be okay to continue building. But yeah, I just wanted to come in and make sure, um, you know, it was safe enough for us to start working in this area. And it is so tempting to try and make my way in here and maybe sneak a few chests, but I don't think we're ready for it at all. And I did notice some more diamonds hidden up on that wall up there, so I'm going to have to make my way up there. But yeah, I'm going to get back to work on this mine shaft and uh, probably come back whenever I get it looking nice and pretty for you guys. Alright, another project completed, but before I go and show you guys the quarry, we've got one more piece of business to handle, and it uh, requires our little friend over here. So from all that mining, we finally got a good bit of iron here, um, enough to at least make an anvil and use our name tag, and finally give a name to our little enderman friend. But really quickly, we're just gonna take the anvil. Uh, this is not gonna be the permanent spot for it, but... Let's go on ahead and rename our friend. And that's right. Our little friend over here has got a name. His new name is Bleakman. <laughs> All right, we've got Bleakman living upstairs in our attic. Very cool. And now that we got that handled, let's go on ahead and show you guys what we've made so far. As you can see, we've got a nice path that leads from outside of our house here. And it wraps around this little hill over to the quarry and as you can see the ground looks a little different here let's hop in free cam but i did a little bit of uh blending here with some stone and some coarse dirt and regular dirt a little bit of cobblestone and some little buttons to act as pebbles just to kind of make this area feel a little bit more messy because i don't think a quarry would typically have just you know grassy plains surrounding it but anyway if we hop down our scaffolding that we made earlier We'll go on ahead and take a trip into the mines. And as you guys saw in the little montage earlier, we did finally make a track that goes all the way down to the strip mine. So I guess now's the perfect time to take a little trip down there. So yeah, as you can see, the track feels really nice. Um, I did initially make it... Wait, I just realized this is probably really loud. Alright, yeah, we'll just let that keep going. Um, sorry, I forgot how loud these things are, but yeah, as you guys see, we have like trapdoor railings here. Um, I don't know if you noticed in the little cinematics, uh, we originally were doing fences and I had to make it like another block wider on this side to let the fences rest on here. And I would have had to make it another block wider on this side and it would have been five blocks long or wide in total. And that kind of defeated the sort of like the danger sort of aspect of like a strip mine. I kind of wanted this to feel uh, really tight, almost like, you know, you could fall over the edge or something like that, even though there are railings. And the fences kind of made it feel a little bit too safe for my liking. But yeah, uh, before I hopped off the track, it, you know, it just went over here down to Y5 or Y negative 58, where we can start our strip mine. And as you can see, Oh yeah, we've already got a couple of diamonds. Um, I'm just going to leave them here for now until we do get a fortune pick so that we can kind of maximize our profits. But yeah, I mean, this place is going to get a lot of use for sure. Oh, and there's a zombie right down there. Yeah, 
So it's not 100% spawn proof, um, which is totally fine. I think that's good. But yeah, just seeing that zombie down there, you know, it kind of adds a little bit to the whole like danger sort of thing that I mentioned earlier. I'm really happy with the way the whole quarry and mine came together. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I had a lot of fun working on this project, but I think that's where we're going to call it for this episode. I think we got a lot done today. So yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys being patient with me while I work on these episodes. And I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one because I know I am. But thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Stay safe. I'll catch you all in the next one.